Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They are a music distribution platform that's geared towards independent artists and producers like myself, maybe you as well. And we'll be getting into a few reasons why I think they are the go-to for music distribution later in this video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the gear in this video, so that being the S1 or the T8 or anything else, make sure to use the affiliate links in the description of the video. If you do end up using those links, I make a small commission from that sale. It doesn't cost you anything extra, so please do that. It helps me a lot. And so the brand new S1, it's based off the SH101, and it uses a technology called ACB, so analog circuit behavior. I've had a hard on for this technology for a while now. <laughs> it is a four voice polyphonic synth and it has some totally wild sound design and wave shaping tools. We'll be getting more into that in future content. This is more about the sequencer on the S1. Based on the size versus what this thing offers, there is a lot of synth in such a small area. For example, Here's my wallet, so it's maybe about three times the size of my wallet. That being said, they've been really clever about how to navigate through these parameters. Like with the other Era Compact units, they've given you what you want, what you need, like on the surface. So you have your keyboard here and a bunch of parameter controls as well. And then under the surface, there's a lot of little like tucked away parameters. When in doubt, just press the shift button, start twisting knobs and you will discover a lot. And of course there's a full list of everything within the manual as well. So just a couple of quick examples, shift, twist the noise knob, you're able to switch between pink and white noise. Hit shift and twist the square wave knob. This is the pulse wave modulator depth. If you just hit the shift knob on its own, you're prompted to hit literally every single button except for exit and enter. <laughs> and if you look closely, there is a description on or underneath what each button does. And you know what? I think this calls for a setup change. So because of the tiny space situation, my hands are like a little bit too big for this thing. Of course, if you want, you could use the S1 keyboard. I decided to blow it up onto a controller. I just feel a bit more creative and comfortable having more of a surface area to actually perform. And then this sort of just becomes like the control center. And by the way, it's also worth noting that almost all of these sound parameters, even the deeper shift functions can be controlled via MIDI CC. And so the S1 is just so compatible with so many other setups as well. In terms of sound design and depth with the S1, this thing goes really deep. I'm going to admit that in comparison to other YouTubers in this community that might also be covering the S1. This is not really my forte. You could be sure that pretty much all bases will be covered in varying degrees all over the internet. So don't worry about that. It also has a bunch of great presets. And at first I was like, where, where are they? How do I get to the presets? Well, actually they live within the patterns on the S1. So I'll jump to pattern one on bank one. Pattern two. There's also a preset sequence within each of these patterns as well. So pattern one, right? Just to give you like a, a context of what it sounds like. Although if you'd like to jump to like a completely empty pattern uh, or start from scratch with the sound, you could of course do that. I think bank four is the one that's empty. Yeah, so these are all the same starting point and there's no pattern within any of them. But for me, I'm gonna jump back to bank one. Which one was it? That one. So I, I really like this sound and I'm gonna use this as a starting point. I'm actually just gonna clear the entire pattern. So I'm clearing all the notes from the pattern by shift and 11. And I'll do the same thing with motion. So any sort of motion recording within the pattern, I'm assuming that most of these presets do have motion recording. Now it's gone. So now I have just the sound with an empty pattern. 
All this being said, again, the main focus of this video is gonna be on the sequencer of the S1 and also in compatibility with the T8, which is also a beast. Here's a video on that. I find that these two pair really well together because the sequencer is pretty much identical on both of them. So let's get into sequencing. Also, I'd like to thank Roland for sponsoring this video. Let's go. So let's just start by throwing in a pattern right away. You could live record into the S1. So let's say I want a metronome. How do, how do I do that? Well, hit shift and record, and there we have it. There is our metronome, we're at 123 BPM. There's actually also a count-in, by the way, which is which is convenient. We could search into the menu. I think count-in is near the end here, where is it? Count, yeah, there it is. Enter, and we're gonna choose a four note count-in, so that's a one bar count-in. And so now if I hit record and play, three, four, there was our one bar count-in, then the sequence starts after that. So let's try that again. I'm going to play something. Two, three. And there we have a sequence. I want to turn off that metronome right away. So I'm going to hit shift record and now it's off. Great. And so just like that, we have a one bar pattern, a one bar sequence. What if we wanted to extend that? Shift last. So what is the last note? We can extend this to 32, which is two bars. If you want, you could go into odd times. It's really up to you. And the, the max is what, 64, I think? Yeah. And so let's say you do choose a multiple bar sequence. If you hit step, now you could go back and forth within that sequence, right? So this is the prompt to do that. But just to keep it simple for this video, we're gonna keep it a one bar pattern. Okay, so we're doing a bit of a setup change here. Some MIDI chaining going on. MIDI out into the in of my controller. MIDI out of my controller into the S1. I want audio from the T8, so mix out of the T8 into mix in of the S1. Yes, you can do that, it's awesome. Put play. Great, so I just wanted that kick. And so there we have a pattern. We could actually add notes over top of this pattern as well, so step and record. I could scroll through the entire pattern. And if I toggle off of step, you could actually see the note that's been written into that particular step as well. So if I wanna add a note over top of it, let's say an F. Right, so now that first step has an F as well. I'm actually gonna go through this and add some more notes to the other ones as well. Okay, that might sound good. Yeah. With the kick? I want hi-hats over this as well, let's do that. Now that we have a cool sequence in there, let's take a look at the sequencer's precision. In recent years with Roland's newest products, they've really raised the standards on the precision of their sequencers, even in smaller products like this. Smaller in terms of size, of course. And so that standard has carried into the S1. As I mentioned earlier, the T8 also has a very strong sequencer similar to the S1, and so it has the same sort of uh, precision as well. The cool thing about this combination is that you don't need to relearn an entire new workflow with a new instrument because they're that similar. And so we're talking like parameter per step precision, which is what we're gonna look into now. So if I step back into my sequencer, these are all my notes. If I hit a specific note, D motion pops up. So these are all the different parameters that I could take a look at. So we've got velocity, gate length, probability, sub steps. So like a stuttery repeaty type thing on a specific step, we're talking like 64th notes here, so it's very, uh, very precise, stuttery. So let's apply these ideas to this sequence. Let's choose the notes we want to change the velocity on. Ding, ding, ding. So this note here, I want to be louder. Whoops. Velocity. Okay, so in comparison, it's still not too much louder. Bring the rest of them down. Very 
very subtle. Let's play with this LFO. Change the LFO rate. With the groove. Open up the envelope a bit. Probability, let's add this to all the notes, see what happens. We're gonna bring it down to like maybe 70 for all of the notes. Yeah, so I would actually put it back to 100% on the first note, just to have like a little bit of a foundation, right? So this is an option. And maybe we'll do the sub-step thing. Honestly, I'm not sure how this is gonna sound, but we'll try it out on the this last note here. Let's see what we could do here. So that's filled with 64th notes. Try that. Kind of cool. Yeah, I'm down. And also just the fact that this last note has like a 70% probability on it, it doesn't hit every time. So I kind of like that, that's really nice. Put the groove. Yeah. That's great. I might even try it on the first note. Substep. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. And so this is the point where I'm gonna save it. So shift and right, pattern, enter. So we've saved the pattern, great. We've written it to memory. The S1 is also very complex when it comes to motion recording, which is what we're gonna get into next. But before that, let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. Here's a few reasons why you should be using DistroKid as opposed to other music distribution platforms, especially if you're an independent artist or producer. Firstly, they are on the cutting edge of social media and new music promotional tools. They're definitely the pioneers in that sense because their platform depends on people like us, independent artists and producers, to use these tools to promote our own music. The amount of stores or streaming platforms that DistroKid distributes to is insane. And they also keep up to date with smaller or up and coming platforms that you might not even know about or have access to. So a perfect example of this is a platform called KKBox, which DistroKid distributes to. You think that Spotify is my biggest streaming earner, but it's actually not KKBox is. So thank you DistroKid for keeping track of that. DistroKid does not take a cut. They deliver 100% of streaming royalties to you, no extra charge. Independent artists and producers, there is a reason why DistroKid distributes one third of the world's music, which is insane. Okay, back to the video. So motion recording is another powerful tool with the S1. You could have up to eight individual parameters per step. So again, it goes deep. <laughs> so the easiest and most natural way of doing this is to just do it live, like manually with your hands. We'll do it live. Okay. So same as before, I'm gonna play this and hit record. And now let's say I wanna play with the filter suite. So that sounds terrible. I wanna get rid of that shift and I'm gonna clear motion recording, enter. So now that's all gone. If you wanna go like the more wild and unnatural route, well, that's an option as well. You could motion record parameters on an individual step basis. So let's have some fun. I'm gonna go nuts with this and just motion record a bunch of stuff into these steps. I don't know how it's gonna sound. Hopefully it'll be cool. Starting with filter frequency. Maybe I could even change like the range of this first one to a higher range. And then let's say over top of that, I'm gonna make sure that record is not on at this point. I'm just gonna play around with other parameters, maybe envelope, ABSR.
All right, so that's a great starting point to work with. Hopefully this video was informative to you in some way. It goes without saying for all of the Era Compact units, don't be fooled by the size. There's like so much that you could do with this synth. They're all surprisingly capable, especially for their small stature. If you're interested in purchasing any of the gear mentioned in this video, please do use the affiliate links in the description of this video. I make a small commission from that sale, no extra charge to you. I also have a Patreon. I offer discounts on one-on-one -on -one lessons. So if that's something that you're interested in, gear like this, SP404, uh, DigiTact, all sorts of other gear, I'm down to give lessons to you. Also, plenty of other exclusive content in the Patreon community as well. So hope to see you there. You're invited. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Roland, and hope to see you soon. Ciao. No. We'll do it live! F it. Do it live!